Hi guys, today we're going to talk about the DSLR controller. And there's an app on Android that allows you to connect your camera to your uh, tablet or phone as a uh, monitor display. So the thing we need, of course, we need a uh, Android devices, a phone, this is a Nexus 5, or a, a tablet. This is the uh, Dell Venice 8, 7, 400, I think. Might be. I just can't remember the um, the model number of this, but if you go to Dell's website and searching for tablet, you will see this very unique one display in the side speaker area thing going on. This is a very nice tablet. I bought this tablet just for this app. Actually, just for the function of the uh, extra monitor. I will talk about that later on. What else you need is a um, OTG cable. So OTG cable is a cable that one size is micro USB and one size is a full size USB. That allows you to connect the uh, micro USB through your charging port on your phone or tablet and connect to a full size USB like this. So you just hook that up. And you can use the mini USB on the other end connect into your camera and the micro USB into your phone or tablet. I'll talk the detail about that. All right, so we already talked about the overall things and I'm gonna talk about like why I recommend this tablet over the uh, professional uh, monitoring system. The first of all, the display. This is eight inches super AMOLED display so what it means is all display the true black and because the size of this display is so much easier to check your focus the another thing is um a lot of those uh, professional monitors requires an extra battery so it's mounted outside of the monitors and that is a huge weight and the battery life is not that great this thing has a built-in batteries. The battery lasts for at least five hours if you use them simultaneously. And that's a great thing about this thing. Other things, we'll talk about the phones. The phones has a size advantage, five inches. Very small and compact. You can have you will have it always with you. So that's the thing about the phone. And when we talk about the usability. We talked um, how easy to connect the things from two cable, link your tablet to your camera. Let me show you actually how it works. So once you plug the mini USB into the camera, and then you plug your micro USB into your tablet. Remove that. And right now you can see once I turn the camera on, I'm not sure. I mean, movie mode. Well, I turn the camera on. The device unlock itself and goes directly into the wheel mode. And you can see how easy is the focus on this thing. You can see everything very clearly. The other thing. Oh, let me put this back here. Other thing is um. This thing has so many modes that you can control over it. Let's briefly talk about these. So you have all your camera controls right here. I'm seeing B mode. So as you can see, if I switch from B mode to F mode, I just change on the shoulder of the camera and it will automatically show up right here. You can choose your um, racking of focus. So you can drag the focus automatically, just like the app does on computers that Canon provides you to. But this allows you to have this everywhere it goes. And it is very useful. So if you want to focus at point A and a focus point B, so you can switch them automatically and the camera will do it for you. So you don't have to change the focus. Uh, you don't have to, to worry about like, did I um, overdid it or did I do something stupid? You have your uh, focus, auto focus mode picture style you have your drive mode 
all the way balance. Everything is touch and go, very easy. On the right side, you have your histogram, RGB channels, you have your zoom function. This zoom, zoom function will actually link to your camera. So while this is zooming in, the camera will be zooming in as well. So if you can see right here, everything is too close, so it's not gonna be in focus. Let's turn the camera away. And try to focus. See, it's just right here. And you can see on the camera display, maybe it's a little bit hard to see, it's the same thing. All right, let's go back to the overlay. So you have all those overlays to choose from. You can have your uh, uh, ruler of third. You have your six by four. You have all the aspect ratio you can choose from for you uh, different video requirements. And if your camera supported like the 5D Mark III does, you can have this level thing going on. So it will show you the camera level on the secondary display. This is pretty useful when you have the thing on a uh, on a rack or on something like very hard to control. But you can see it directly from here. Let's turn that off. Right here, I mean the movie no mode right now. So you have the recording button, you have the shutter button. Down below you have your uh, shutter speed, aperture, ISOs. Everything is touch and go. You have all the little functions right here, so all you have to do is just tap it. You'll see an auto, so let's go back to that. You have your shutter cons, you have your battery life. And from what I know, I have used the Magic Lantern for, for a while. Sometimes it works, sometimes it will stop the camera to recording. All you have to do is just re restart everything, and it will work. But they were not perfect, they were not um, officially spored. Anyway, so they're, they're not mean to work with each other. So let's go into the options. What do you have? You have all the image reveal, uh, following reveal type bop shot. So you can have your uh, bop mode on the app. So you don't have to bot a secondary control, a, a um, third party or original brand controller. The shutter controller may cost you somewhere between 30 to 60 bucks. So you can save that from here. You have the type bop shot. And you have HDR and auto exposure bracketing. Uh, 5D Mark III has it. Some other camera doesn't. So you can use that as well. Uh, something else, fo focus bracketing, we'll talk about. Time lapse. Yes, you can shoot time lapse with this piece. It's very useful. But it's not as good as the uh, Magic Lantern one. I still prefer to use that for time lapse. Uh, what else you can have is full screen life wheel. So that involves you to use the full screen as a life wheel. So you don't have all the auto controls, but you will see the uh, wall meter is still here and you'll see your full picture. One tap is back to the full control mode. Camera information. This is this is worth something very special. As a Canon user, you may know that there's not that much app that allows you to check the, the shutter speed cons. Of a camera, so Nikon camera can check that from the uh, EXFF uh, data. So you just right click the picture and, or use Photoshop. You can, you can easily find how many shutter speed you have gone with that camera. With the camera information, you can see everything. You can see the the uh, the manufacturer, the mode, the vision, the serial number. I might have to block that, and you can see the shutter count. Very useful. Some of the software. Just to check the uh, shutter cons costs you around something 20 or 50 bucks. Last time I was trying to sell my 70 and it's just a horrible thing. I don't even know this app exists back then. Well, it was like five or six years ago. Let's click that way. Sync time. This is very useful as well. So if you have a three Canon camera in hand, we were, were trying to shoot the uh, video and you want to make sure the timeline is this correct and you what you can do is sync the time from the tablet to the camera so all three camera will be on the same time once they start the recording their timeline will be accuracy as the seconds that's the sync time uh, you have this confirmations image format and quality audio format and quality sight and shooting 
strobe recharge delay, focus pull uh, step delay, all that stuff is controls of your camera. And you can go into the individual of those. Downstairs, you have the configuration of life wheel, life wheel resolution. It's not currently available. I haven't figured out why, but maybe it's because of the camera. You have to render a frame limit, 24 frames per second. I'm sure this thing does not give you 24 frames per second. It's somewhere about like 20. And this is a GoPro uh, USB cable. It works very well. If you, if you switch to some cheaper cable, like very thin cable that came with your car reader or something, it might not work as well as this. But as I can say, any mini USB cable works. It's just the, um, the quality of the data will drop sometimes. Go down there, you can see uh, display filter. And this is where the key point of this app. If you go to the display filter, you can see all those modes, exposure, contrast, peaking, luminosity, uh, luminosity and channel mask. The, the most I think we're going to use is exposure and peaking. Exposure is the uh, zebra, so it will show you all the overexposed or the underexposed. The peaking is something that Canon doesn't offer to low-end cameras. I mean, low-end cameras like... Uh, digital DSLRs, they're not meant to be shooting videos, they're just a function of the camera. So, right here, the peaking of the uh, the app is very well, it's just designed very well, and you use this. Is, there's no problem to use it. Red, green, and blue channel you can choose, so everything in focus will be red, green, or blue dots on the display, or you can use exposure and grayscale, that, but that will make your whole image black and white. So, if I go to in red and I go back to the app don't cancel it and I'll point this to my uh, speaker right here if you can see while I was going in you see that reddish thing uh, on my tablet that's where in focus that's focus peaking Magic Lantern does offer that but it's not as great as this one. This is very useful. Especially if you're using this as a secondary uh, display to, to check the focus of what you're thinking right here. All right, let's get off that. No, I don't want to exit. Go back. That's the display filter. You can choose everything else. You have um, a lot of options to choose from. Goes down here, you have your mirroring. So if you want to mirror the image or flip the image that's the option. Um, configuration reviews. This is another key thing I want to talk about this. This tablet supports um, extra SD cards. So you can... This is crazy. This this tablet supports to um, uh, 480 something gigabyte SD card. We don't have that yet. This is future proofed. But you can, you can put a that size SD card into it. Or you can put a, uh, let's say... 128 gigabytes memory cards in this and once you're linked the camera through uh, to the app it can automatically back up where you shot so you have a shot in your sd or cf card you have a shot in this it's very very useful as a backup it doesn't cost you a thing it's just that useful and when it goes down you can see uh controls you have all that thing and you have your uh, informations Let's go back. And let me show you how I can mount this on the onto the camera. It's very easy as well. Let me just turn that off. Unhook this. This is two piece. Two piece thing. So one thing is this um tablet holder is called uh square jellyfish. I bought this on Amazon. Around like twenty bucks. It folds down very well, and the back tilts, rotates 360. All you have to do is just open these and clip your uh, tablet or phone in. For some phones, this might be too tall for your phone. For, for, for In my case, my Nexus 5 doesn't fit into it. But you can always go to the side way. 
So it will hold the uh, top and bottom of the phone like that. It's very useful. The second piece we're going to need is a coat shoe to a tripod mount adapter. This thing will allow you to connect the, uh, anything that has a, a, a shutter speed, I mean, I mean tripod mount onto your camera's uh, hot shoe. So what do we have to do? You can see there's a, a standard tripod mount, quarter inch. I just turn that on. I mean, screw that in, not turn that on. Forgive me, I'm, I'm not a uh, first language English speaker, so. And you just put this down. There you go. Toplet. In. Right now you can see, <laughs> you probably say this is wrong. Like why you have the lens and the display in the front of the, 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 the camera in the same way. Don't worry, because what you can do is turn it back, loose the, uh, the knot, and you can rotate it upside down, no problem. If you have to have a second uh, shooter, someone to pull the focus for you, tilt it to the right or left, no problem. They can just control the focus for you right there. And you just plug that in. Yep, oh, wrong side. Turn the camera on. You're good to go. How easy is that? And some of you may have a question like, oh, what if I have a, a, a shotgun mic or I have a, I have a recorder like that? There's a, there's a thing I found on um, Amazon. It's very cheap as well. A hand grip or a holder, or whatever you call that. So let's not make any mistakes. So don't fall the top onto the ground and, and make it pieces. So what you can do is just attach this to your camera onto the tripod mount. Make sure it's square and tight. And now what you have is the two extra um, uh, coat shoe mount. And you have one on your top of the camera. So what you can do right here is you can connect everything that has a has a coat shoe mount onto it. So in my uses, I like to have this thing on top of the camera. On, uh, I mean the uh, the top uh, on top of my camera. So I'll screw that in. Rotate it back. I'll have the recorder right here. So the recorder will stuck right here. And I'll have the mic right here. I will link the um, mic uh, mini jack into the recorder, not directly to the camera. Because the camera preamp is very bad on, on these uh, Canon DSLRs. And you get all the crazy noises that you cannot eliminate. So I'll record that into the recorder and sync the audio with the camera afterwards. So now what you have is a, is a pretty crazy, but still compared to some uh, professional video recorder, this is very compact. And you have a second place to, to hold the camera. It's very easy. I know this looks a little bit crazy, but trust me, this is not a bad thing for a video recorder. Oh, probably just see through <laughs> my little garage. It's a, it's a mess. I don't want to mention it. And <laughs> but overall, there's, there's a few bad things about this. First thing is Android only. They do make a, a uh, an iPhone app. I'm not so sure it's the same guys who makes the iPhone app, but the iPhone thing is very limited, and they try to sell you the whole thing about two to three hundred bucks through a registration. So, what that means is you cannot just hook it up and use it. You have to register that thing through their website to get a, a authorization, and then you can use it. And that authorization costs you about three two hundred fifty bucks or something. And, uh, but if you jailbreak your iPhone or iPad, you can use that, but it's not that stable. 
compares to the Android version because the Android version were out at least like five years, I think. The Android, I mean, the iPhone app is only out for like a year or so. The the other bad thing about this is can only. So if you have a Nikon camera or you have a Sony camera, that's not gonna work. I'm sorry, guys, if you watch this <laughs> from the beginning, just to wondering like, is that work with my Nikon or a Sony cameras? Sorry, not right now. Probably not further because I don't think they were they were trying to do that. And um, that's the bad thing, but except from that, there's nothing else bad. One last thing I want to show you guys is very awesome. And um, some of you might not think this is great, but if you're shooting on a jab or, or 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 you're shooting somewhere remotely, and you need a remote uh, monitor, what do you do about that? By a transmitted display that costs you a ton of money. But let me show you this. If I go right here, go to the menu, and go down. If I see there's thing something called Wi-Fi pass-through mode, you click that once, and that put this tablet into a waiting connection. All you have to do is just make sure they were under the same network. If you're shooting outside, you might connect them through a Wi-Fi or something. But right here, let me turn the um, the the app on on my phone. It will automatically searching the device through Wi-Fi. So right now you can see, I'm seeing my phone. I'm seeing the, the same image on my phone. It's a little bit laggy, but it's, use, it's usable. And this is just crazy. And you, you can always put your phone onto your camera as the transmitter and roll the, the larger picture on your uh, tablet, no problem. Or you can do is, um, you see this um, micro USB thing I talked about, the OTG cable, you can link all the USB devices on. If your device is poor, you can also get a micro HDMI uh, cable. So that OTG cable will allow you to change from micro USB to micro uh, HDMI. So you can have a larger display for monitoring. This is just crazy, isn't it? All right, let's go up. Um, I think this is pretty much it. This is my first video on YouTube about tutorial and, and uh, explanation things going on. And I hope I, I will have more things going on. Um, I have two strobes I want to do a review on. I have a voice recorder, H5 I want to do a review on. I have a couple headphones I want to do, a camera, lenses. I'm not sure yet. This is just a start. So if you want to, please subscribe my channel somewhere right there. Or maybe on my tablet so and i'll see you guys bye